Google's, uh, have you played before, Aniswa? Uh, yeah. You have, okay. So uh, if you are free on Sunday, you can join mine as well. Okay, so um, yeah, so your, your sister will have to join the other class, which I do tomorrow uh, with Josiah. Uh, because your ratings are a bit different. Uh, don't worry, you are four years younger than her, so you have time to catch up. I think you will catch up with her. If you do one year with me, you will easily catch up. I don't know, it depends. If she is also improving, then maybe you won't catch up with her. So let's see who, who's going to be the best travel player in your family. So, okay. Okay, so it's good to have competition like that. But uh, like I said, you know, you are the younger child by four years so you have more time than her um let's see anyways so um yeah so i think today um like i have about 10 or 11 topics for the players at your level so um one of the topics that i want to really cover with you which i saw when i was doing the uh coaching uh when the games were in progress um on sunday um what i what i saw you you had a small problem with was on the first turn okay on the first turn do you remember i was showing you some things last sunday yeah okay so um let's just look at a few examples and then you can uh, i have the notes prepared uh for this topic on the first turn um but i want to look at some of the games you just played um yeah so this is a game i think you played recently uh is this someone you know from malaysia no oh, but the, the flag is malaysian so i thought you didn't know them okay um okay let's see what happened here so on the first turn so this was your first turn so okay so i will cover this so um this is what you did as you can see on the screen here um so you did he changed it um can you like why did you want to do that why did you want to exchange it uh, because i wanted to try again a bingo yes that's the right idea i think with this sort of rack it's actually the right idea okay um why do you think this rack is good for the bingo like maybe something ending with ing very good that's it that's the idea that's it the same sort of thing uh hosanna and her sister are learning who are going to be in your class uh hosanna um like i was told, telling her as well uh look for common ending so players at your level um sorry i just have to sneeze <coughs> <coughs> Um, the players at your level should be looking at uh, like making bonuses. Um, I notice on your profile, you, you have made bonuses, but uh, not many. You made about 10 bonuses, it says on your profile. Um, so that's the right idea, because if you get a bonus, you get about 70 points, which is a huge score. See, I can see you made about 12 bonuses on your profile. Yeah. So, um, which is good. So, yeah. So all of these tell me... Um, something about your level of play like um, what the score is for your average turn how many bonuses you play um, yeah your average score so all of those information like help me um, understand how you are playing so um, yeah so at your level like I said you should look for like common endings like do you know um, Aniswa um, do you know any other type of endings that I will that will help you for uh, bonuses? ERS. Very good. Yeah, that's also very very good. Um, any other type of endings? E E R. Uh, T E R. Okay. Yeah, I think T E R got a few words. Yep. Any other type of endings? I E S. Very good. I E S. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I E S T. EST. So whenever you get these letters, try and um, hang on to them because uh, even something like ED is good. You know, um, it's not a huge 
ending, only two letters, but something can happen with that. Um, but definitely ERS and I think ING and EST. In fact, like they have done like research on this topic and it's proven like the most common like letters for bonuses for three letters are these. These three letters are the most common for three letters uh, for bonuses. So you actually know them. That's very good. Um, so so you're you're on the right track there, but um, your exchange is is the one that was a problem. So you exchange T I, okay. So um, I think instead of T I, maybe if you you should have exchanged. So I'm gonna cover. This is another topic. So today's topic today's topic is so uh, first turn or call it the opening turn. Um, yeah. So today's topic is this. Uh, is today's topic. Okay, but uh, this topic where um, where you did this. So when you had a e i i t n t. So I wrote the consonants and the vowels separately. Um, yeah. So it's not good to have too many vowels. So definitely one of the eyes need to go because you have two eyes there but uh, definitely you want to hang on to the ing that is correct so you, you are going to exchange um, some other letters you're definitely going to exchange um, exchange an i yeah you're going to exchange an i and what do you think you know uh, another letter you want to exchange a I think so, yeah. I think an A or an E would be good. So definitely hang on to the T. The T is very important, that ING. You, you're, you can make more bingos there. So ET, ING is quite good. Um, even if you did the other way around, you exchanged IE and hang on to AT, ING, even that is good. I think they are both equally good. Okay. So uh, that's what you should have done there. Okay. So yeah. So your idea was... Correct. Yeah, that's the correct thing to do there because you have an excellent, excellent rack there. And the best thing to do there is uh, preserve that ING and hope you might get a bingo. So again, like if anybody is listening to this, I might post this on YouTube and we have all of these players who are more able than you. Even your sister might have a different view or even we have expert players. They have different opinions because they play at a different level you know my my level my rating is like 2250 so there are different strategies when it comes to expert players so i'm just letting the people who are watching this i i know you can have different opinions on this but at his level at aniswa's level this is what he needs to learn later on i will give him better ideas so don't hate on me i've played scrabble for about 30 years, so I know the other techniques, but this is what Aniswa needs to learn at this stage, okay? Okay, so yeah, you should have exchanged two vowels there. Um, back to you, Aniswa. And then uh, your opponent did this. Okay, so the next, so this topic, um, yeah, okay, so this is, uh, that, again, uh, I have different topics. So the first, today's topic is going to be the opening turn, where this topic, uh, what we are learning here is a bit like rack balance. Have you heard of that term, Aniswa? Rack balance? No. Okay, all right. So I'm going to discuss that. Uh, that will be on another day. It is basically um, this thing I told you about the vowels and consonants, okay? Uh, this rack here is is a bit too vowel heavy, okay? So if, you're, if it's too vowel heavy or if you have two of the same kind, sometimes two eyes aren't the best thing to have. Um, the rack balance isn't great. So by doing this, you're achieving good rack balance, okay? On your second turn also, it's the same topic, this thing called rack balance, okay? So it's to do with how many consonants and vowels you have, uh, whether you have two of the same kind. Um, I think the second turn also, you have very similar problems like your first turn. Second turn, as, you can, as I can see, you have A, E, E, A, E, I, I, and G, and V, okay? Very similar rack to the first one. So ideally, um, like um, you, if you are playing three tiles, so 
if you are playing three, I make it a bit smaller so I can type a bit more. Um, you can still read it, right? If I made it a bit smaller, you can still read the text, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I can type more stuff, that's fine. Okay, if you are playing three letters, um, okay, so you did play three letters, okay? I'm going to show you what you did. You did van, okay? But when you played van, um, the letters you are leaving behind, so always the letters that you leave behind, I always put it in brackets so it makes sense. So that's how I'm going to type. So whenever I say you're playing something, the letters left behind will be in brackets. So what letters are left behind, Aniswa, this time when you play van? G I I E. That's it. Yeah. So it's G I I E. Okay. So this is not a good combination of letters to leave behind. Okay. Coming back to that thing called the rack balance, it's not good because you have three vowels and one consonant. Usually you want equal number of consonants and vowels or slightly more consonants than vowels. But this one has more vowels. Plus, of the vowels you have, two of those are the same. Again, the two I situation. That's not good either. So those two are the things that affect rack balance, okay? So if you have too many vowels or too many consonants or if you have too many letters of the same kind, you know, that's not good, okay? So instead of van, and another thing that happened when you played van, you lost that all important ing combination. Yes, Anissa? Yeah. Yeah, you lost the ing. So that's a bit of a shame. If you were able to hang out with an ing, it would have helped you with the bonus. So let's see if we can find a word where, where we do all of that. Okay, so our aim with this rack is to somehow um, hold on to ing. Uh, we also want to have uh, a maintain a good uh, rack balance with the letters we have. Okay, so um, okay, I'll give you a clue. The letters I'm I'm thinking you should be playing are these. So see if you can find a word with this and see if you can. Yeah. That's, that's uh, same score, but we've been so much better. Yeah? yeah. See, same score, but you hang on to that ing and the rack balance is better. So when you play via, you hang on to eing, which is uh, which is really good. Still, still pretty solid, like teing. So yeah, okay. So these are other topics. Um, I've also discussed a bit on bonuses. See, I've I've also mentioned this. So these are like other topics. Today we are going to solely look at first turn or the opening turn. So it's okay, we discuss other topics as well. Um, let me pick another game as well and discuss uh, your first turn. Player, I chose your opponent's profile. another game and I want to see what you did on your opening turn um, we use target this one on the first turn let's see what happened here she started okay all right so she picked fun which is not bad I think I think with this rack fun is not bad um okay fond is not bad so my first question is um she played fond like this which is not too bad um but i noticed like um how, how playing it the other way so she could play fond like this um she could play fond this way as well the second way like this um oh this way too font so there are you know there are more ways to play font but let's look at these three so she made font this way um or you can also make font uh, on that next square starting on the next square or you can make font starting from here so are these three ways of playing font all the same or is, is one of them better 
than the other? What do you think, Aniswa? One of them is better than the other. Which one is the better way of playing font? I think the third one. Like this? Oh, was it yeah. was it the way she played? This was how she played it, font, or was it like this, starting from there, um, from letter F, or, or column G? Um, is it you mean this? Is it this one? This one? Yeah. I don't think so. I think the first one she how she played. All right. So I I yeah okay I think the way she played it was okay i think i think um, even this way is not bad yeah I, I personally would play this way um yeah between this one and the other one it's almost the same uh, uh again uh, some people might say don't play this way because you're giving her the chance to play on the double letter square with the f so um it's not too bad between the two um i think playing it the third way is probably the best yeah uh, but the second way is the worst do not play font like this the worst way to play font why because your if the opponent has a z then they can put it there that's it okay it's the worst way to play font okay so you already know that okay good okay um in fact the best move for this uh, best word for this for this rack is is there is actually a word called frond those are like roots that come from certain type of plants to gather water frond is a word so frond is the best move but you know she didn't know it that's fine but what you did was the correct thing yes don't play frond this way that's the worst way to play frond okay good okay so this is like a little warm-up for us to understand like practically what what went on so i'm going to look at the notes um so you, uh, you can read the notes with me i'll try and enlarge the screen um let me take a bit more space right so that way the notes will be bigger a bit sorry it's still loading That's much better. Okay. <coughs> As well, we have a bit, few more blank spaces there. The zoom level. It's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll continue with this level of zoom. You can read the words. No, it's clear enough. Uh, Aniswa, is it clear? Are the words clear on my notes? Yeah. Okay. Clear. Okay. okay. Then yeah. it, okay, good. Okay, so why don't you read it for me from the top? In most games, the competitive spot is to your advantage to start well. The same goes for Scrabble. Here are a few tips to get yourself off to a bright start. A five-letter word which reaches up to the DLS from the center square. Okay. You will be okay. able to One score second. a lot okay. of... Okay, so play a five letter word which reaches up to the DLS. Do you know what the DLS stands for, Aniswa? The double letters? That's it, the double letter square from the center square. Okay, good. Okay, continue reading, please. Thank you. You will be able to score a lot of points if you are able to play a five letter word that also falls in the DLS from the center square. Especially if the five letter word contains a high scoring consonant that is at the end of or at the beginning of the word. The, the default double letter squares indicate by the green arrows. Try and play a word that contains a high scoring consonant H, K, J, etc. That, that falls on the DLS. The word should contain five letters or more. Let us consider that what words we could play with the tile shown on the left robot motor broom abort which word would be the be best option and what would be the best position for it to be played okay all right 
Um, so we have this rack here. Okay, um, you have a few options there. Um, I've already given you. Okay, so um, the best way to start is to the you know under normal the best way to start is to score. You know what do you think is the highest score you can sort of achieve on the first turn? Broom. Okay, broom. 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 Yeah, that's it. Yeah, broom is the best one. Very good. Very good. You 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 understood it straight away. Okay, so. Yeah, let's let's continue reading. Okay, we can see. We can see that both robot and a bot do not have the highest scoring letter placed at either end of the word. The B in robot is at the third position, while the B in a bot is at the second position. We would require the highest scoring consonant to be placed at the first or the fifth position. Both motor and broom have the highest scoring letter placed at one end. Let us see how we will place them. The first zero of the word, you know, first O of the word motor is placed on at the center square. 14 points. 3M, 1, 0, no, 1, O, 1, Okay, P, you know how to calculate it. Sorry, this is too easy for you. Just say 14 points. Uh, I'm just showing people how to calculate it, but you know how to do it, okay? The second one, the M is placed. The M is placed at the center square, 16 mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. This is the best position. M placed on the DLS on the left, 20 points. Okay, so you know this, right? So to place the high scoring consonant on the double letter square, that's the best way to start, okay? So the only way you can do that is to have a five letter word. A four letter word won't work, like we saw on the previous example with fond. Fond doesn't. Uh, This game here, yeah. yeah. With font, it wasn't possible because it's only a photo word. It won't reach up to this uh, um, double letter square. But with front, you can because uh, it, that's a five letter word. And if you have the F, F is a high scoring letter than the D, that will score more points than having the D on the double letter square. How can we have the D on the double letter square, Anishwa? Because the. Uh, because you will score less when times two. Yeah. So if I did it like this, you would score less. It's only 22. Whereas front with the F on the double letter square, you score more. You score four points more. Okay. But don't forget, you also can start. Lots of people don't like to do this. But if you look at all the games that I play on Google, if it's my time to start, I always like to annoy my opponents. And I like to start vertically. Okay, so if you look at my, it's just like a psychological, even at my level, yeah, people like to do horizontal, but I like to annoy people and play this way. Okay, so you can do it this way as well. So with the F on the double letter, we'll score more than the D. Okay, because uh, D is only two, as you said. Very good. So you know this. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, um, so we looked at motor. Next, we have the word broom. Okay. So, um, yeah, so continue, um, please. Uh, thank you. Oh, let us consider the points for broom. Score few more points than motor. From the above examples, we can see that the score, high scoring consonant needs to be placed on the DLS for maximum points. You could either choose to play the B on the DLS score to your left or place the M on the DLS score to your right. Either position scores you 24 points. Okay. Right. One of these. Yeah, go on. Sorry, read it. One of these. One of these options is better than the other. It will be explained in the section titled Placing Vowels Next to the DLS. J, Q, right, once Z. Again, once again. Okay, as you can see on the picture, I've only given you a part of the board. I don't. I didn't want to take up more space on the page. Trying to, you know, have the whole board. It's the it's the middle row where the center square is. So the uh, center square is on M on the first picture. The center square is on B on the second picture. So both score twenty four because both have a letter with three points ending. So uh, or starting. So you can score 24 points uh, with either one, okay? So uh, next is, yeah, uh, JQXZ, okay? 
is um, yeah. Thank you, Anissa. Please please read that for me. Thank you. E JQXZ. If you do pick up one of the above high scoring consonants, you need to try and place them on the DLS on your first turn by forming a five letter or longer word. You will usually score in excess of 40 points. Be extremely vigilant of how you would end up placing the letter. If you are not careful, you will miss out on a lot of points. Oh. Different positions of how the word quote has been placed. <laughs> yeah, you can see, right? Um, the first picture shows quote with 30 points. And the second picture shows quote on the first turn with 48 points. Why is there a big difference in score? Because if you put it this side, the E will times 2. But if you put it on the left hand side, the Q will times 2. Yeah. And the Q has 10 points. So it will be 20 then plus the 4. So that's 24 times 2. That's 48. Whereas quote with the other way with the first picture, the E is only 2 points. Then you have to add 2, 3, 4, 5. Plus the Q, 15, that's 30 points. So you have to be really careful on the first turn, okay? Now, uh, okay, let's jump on to the uh, next section, okay? So this is the, uh, please, could you read from here? Thank you. Placing vowels. Placing vowels next to DLS. This is purely a defensive consideration based on what your opponent could be up to when they are played after your first turn. The, there are four DLS surrounding the center square. They are indicated by the green arrows. You should try not to expose vowels next to the double letter squares, DLS, that are next to the center square. Consider okay. the. Right. So, this is what I was telling you all the time. So, be careful of these DLSs uh, on the first turn. Um, don't expose them with vowels next to them. Um, yeah, okay. Right, so, uh, yeah, sorry, consider, yeah, please read from here, consider the last. Consider the last example of the previous section. You could have played broom at two different places. They both score the same amount of points, but playing it one way is better than the other. After player one has played broom, the opponent has the following tiles. J-A-L-B-I-R-D. Player 2 will hope to place their highest scoring consonant on the DLS that becomes available when a vowel was placed next to, to, to it during the first turn. She, he, she chooses to play the word jab. So when I was typing this document, I was working in a girls' school and usually when we talk about a player, they always say it's he or a boy. So, I mean, just to encourage the girls, that's why I said she. Um, it doesn't matter, it can be she or he. Um, so yeah, on the first turn, um, yeah, broom could be played this way with the B on the double letter square, or broom could be played this way um, with the M on the double letter square, the pitch on the left, pitch on the right, sorry. Um, but the opponent has J A L B I R D, and they have played jab on both different ways on which how broom was played for the first turn by the player one. So depending on how they played, they played jab still. But the difference in score is huge for jab, depending on how the player one played broom. Um, on the picture on the left, with the B on the double letter, um, jab scored 44. Whereas the M on the double letter, jab scores only 28. Why did that happen, Aniswa? Because the B R O O M it, it opens for the O to get time. Yeah. Two. That's it. Yeah. With the J. With the J. The J will times two twice. That's the reason. That's it. Yeah. The double letter on the J will apply twice. Uh, whereas when with broom played this way, uh, the J is not on a double letter. It's just on a normal tile. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. So Continue, continue reading, please. The score. The score for letter J has been considered twice in both instances. Unfortunately, for player 1, it has been placed on a DLS. Therefore, the score for the letter is first doubled and then considered twice. Once each for Joe and Jack. Whereas the example on the right, the J was not placed on the DLS. Therefore, player 2 scores less in this case. 
Only eight points is assigned for the letter J. Each time it is considered for each word. Okay. okay. So yeah. So you understood that. Okay. So next we are moving on to um, yeah uh, this topic called score because um, I do say be careful about um, how you open up the vowels next to the uh, double letter squares. But, um, in this situation, playing broom this way or playing broom that way, it didn't matter whether you played in either way. You scored twenty four. But sometimes that won't be the case. Sometimes you will actually lose points because you don't want to expose the O next to the double letter square or vowel next to the double letter square. Okay, so we look at examples like that. Okay, so yes, we are back here, Anishma. So um, could you read, please? Thank you. Score. Please do consider how much you would score less by having to place your word in a way that. It does not expose TLS for your opponent on her next turn. In the example considered above, the scores for the word broom were exactly the same, irrespective of how it was placed at two places, available for maximum points. Therefore, it was then worth considering whether you would expose any DLS by playing it one way or the other. If you are able to score more than six or more points by having to expose the DLS, it is well worth the risk. Once Consider that, sorry, this. that was a bad uh, way of writing it. If you are able to score six or more points, that's understood. Not more than six or more. That's horrible. Okay, <laughs> I didn't type it correctly. If you are able to score six or more points, that's that simple. That is a simple way of saying it. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so consider the examples shown below, okay? So you have the word bat, you can play it like this with the B on the double letter or the H on the double letter the other way. Which one do you think is better, Anisba? The H on the double letter. Oh, okay, all right. Um, here's the explanation. Could you read this, please? It is better to place B on the DLS instead of the H. You lose out on two points by not exposing the DLS next to the letter A. Yeah, before. If you are able to score six or more points, um, then you can expose the double letter. But you are, how, many ex how many points extra are you scoring here by having the H on the double letter? Two. Two. So it's, it's not too much you're sacrificing. So um, imagine if the opponent had an X or a Z or a J, that'll be a big score for the opponent. So you avoid that. You only lost two points. So sometimes it's worth losing some points. You don't just go like, oh my gosh, this is the highest scoring move. It'll always be the best then. Sometimes it's not the case. Okay. Here as well, it's only two points that you lose. So here you play the way where you don't expose the A next to the double letter square. Okay. Let's look at the next example. So you have Neil with the K on the double letter. Uh, you can also play Neil with the L on the double letter. But uh, what's the difference in score here, Aniswa? Eight points. So here, what do you think? Which way is better? On, um, I think the second one. Yes. No, first one, first one, first one. Okay, here is the first one. Okay, here is the first one. Why is it better? Because it scores more than six extra. Okay. If it scores six extra also, you should go for the score. If it's six or more, you go for the score. But here it scores eight. So it's definitely better. Okay. So read the explanation. On this occasion, it is worth. On this occasion, it is worth exposing the E next to the DLS for eight, ex eight points extra. The option on the left is pre preferred. Okay. So this okay. need is preferred. Okay. Because... Yeah, some people, some people actually do this. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to expose the E next to the double letter square, so I'll score less points. But this is a huge sacrifice. This is eight points. No, no, no. You have to score the points there. If it's just two points, like batch, then it's fine. Okay, it's just two or four points. Um, it's fine. Um, why can't the difference be three or five points on the first turn? This is a maths question. Why can't the difference between two different turns, like options like this, why can't it be three or five points on the first turn? 
why will it never be three, five, or one point between two turns on the first turn? Mm. I do not know. Okay, because the first turn on the center square, it'll always double the score. So whenever you double any number, it'll always be an even number. It'll never be an odd number. So that's why the difference can never be five or four. Okay, or it can be an odd number. It can be uh, like not during when you play, but after you had played, if your opponent challenged you, okay, and then the word was ex word is a word the word exists in the dictionary, then you get five points extra, don't you? Yeah. No, that if you for most of the tournament games, it's free challenge. Oh, it's free challenge. Okay, okay, okay. So you haven't started doing that, okay? But uh, usually in tournaments, it's five points, okay? So if you earn five points because your opponent challenged it, then it can be odd. But before you play, uh, before you play your turn, you you will only consider even number scores between options because on the first turn it's always doubled, okay? Good. So here's another option that you um, do on the first turn. Um, could you read, please? Thank you. Uh, can I have a toilet first? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. about the drums blasting on the background um there's a temple not too far from here and there's some form of religious um ceremony going on so um yeah um i hope you're not too distracted by what's going on in the background um yeah so the boy he's gonna come back soon i don't know what else i can say in the meantime so yeah so if you're listening if you're watching this video uh you can join this class or you can also join the um uh, upper intermediate class, which is for players rated about 1 800, 1 in 50 on Googles, and um, yeah, and that's up to about 2050 on Google. So you can join that class as well. I do free classes on Saturday mornings for people in Asia, uh, free like a taster class. So you can have a little taster session with me. Uh, but he's back, so um, let's continue reading. So, Aniswa, yeah, exchange. Exchange, when you are the player going first, it is one of the most opportune moments to exchange tiles and miss a third. Technically, you haven't actually missed a third. You have simply chosen to go second. That could be one of the two reasons as why you would want to exchange. Balance your rack. Please read the section on rack balance for a full explanation okay. of the topic. All right. So, yeah, that's what I was telling you before. Uh, rack balance. So you were sort of doing that here, like when you exchange the IA, you could have paid, actually paid something. You had lots of options there. So one of the reasons why you did IA was for rack balance, but I think you exchange this more, these two letters more for the uh, second reason. Okay, but that's why you exchange. The second reason why you would exchange in the first turn, uh, please read, please. Thank you. Play. Play a bonus. If okay. you feel that you are only one of two tiles away from playing a seven-letter word, you could exchange the unwanted tiles and hope to pick up the right tiles for you to play the bonus. You also have the added advantage to be being able to actually play the bonus on the board, since the board tends to open up at the beginning. So yeah, at the beginning you can do that sort of thing because the board is open, the board is not blocked. Uh, I'm sure you had situations, Aniswa, where you actually have a bonus, an ING ending bonus or ERS ending bonus, and you don't have a place, isn't it? Yeah, you had yeah. situations. Yeah, that's frustrating. So that happens as you play more tiles. But at the beginning, is the best start. Is the best moment actually to um, to to do these sort of things to see if you can get a bonus at the start. Okay. All right. So look at these examples as well on the next page. So could you, um, yeah, please read from here, please. Thank you. Consider. Consider this rack. Unfortunately, this rack does not make a bingo with these letters. It is better to change the extra letter I than to play a word. The letters S thing combined with many other letters to make a seven letter bingo. T, pasting. E, seating. A, against. Your chances of playing a bonus may be very low. 
if only one or two tiles could be combined to form a letter, seven letter bonus by changing the non matching tile consider the following rack it is very poor it is a very poor re decision if on your first turn you exchange the g hoping to pick up the q on the subsequent turn to play equinox there is only one q in a scrabble set your chances of picking up uh, picking the queue is very slim whereas the in the previous example you have a multiple opportunity of picking up the right tile since the six letter giants combine with many letters to form a seven letter word save that second yeah yeah okay so don't just say oh my gosh on the first turn if i pick up that one tile i can make a bingo so you change that one tile and the one tile you want is like a Q or a K or an F. That's not worth it because there's only one K and there are only two Fs. But if you can pick up like more letters that will make a bingo, like in the first example, A-S-T-I-N-G combines with at least 15 or 18 letters to make a bingo, you know. So you have more chance of making a bingo, you know. Um, so, yeah. So... So that like that day I played with my sister, I got C A P T I I N. So I exchanged one letter and I got O. So that's already a bingo I put. So yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, ask me. Yeah. Uh yes, teacher. Sorry, I thought I stopped you. Yeah, so you, you did that. You had C A P T I I N and you exchanged the I. Yeah. Okay, and what were you hoping to pick up? What what letters were you hoping to pick up for the bingo? O or A. Good good decision. I think that's a good decision. Uh, on most occasions that's a good decision. Yeah. So again, the top players, please don't hate on me for incomplete advice, but um, I'm advising a player who's just starting or who's at a, you know, intermediate level. So there are more factors to consider, but generally speaking, I think that's a good decision, but what you did there, okay? You, you have the A or the O. I think one or two others may also make a bingo. I think even there's a bingo with the E, which is an odd one uh, with C-A-P-T-I-N. Um, there is a bingo, but you might not know it because it's a very odd word. Um, it, it's uh, plus, E it makes um, it's this word, but it, yeah, picante, which means spicy in Spanish or in Italian. Uh, that is all. That was also possible with the E, but definitely um, with the A, with the O, cap captain or capitan also is good. I think the Spanish version of captain uh, and caption. Um, I'm sure there are other words as well, like with the S. There's catnips. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing out on others, but yeah, this one actually makes a lot of bingos. Uh, but it also depends on other factors, but I think generally speaking, that's the right decision. Okay, very good. Very good. That's a good example. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so um, let's continue with the, the notes here. We have another 10 minutes or so. So, okay. So, um, yes, please. Um, um, Anissa, please read. Second turn, scoring opportunities. From your opponent's per perspective, one of the most likely ways in which they will seek to maximize their score on the second turn is by placing a high scoring consonant on the DLS. They will seek to double up by playing a word parallel to the word you have already played on the board. You have already observed how this is possible from the previous examples. The player who goes second will place their high scoring consonants on DLS that may have been exposed next to the vowels placed by the opponent on their first turn. Observe the example shown on the left. The M has been placed on the DLS, enabling it to be doubled up, considered consider twice. The effect of the DLS doubling the points for the letter M has been considered both for the word me and map individually. Right, good. Okay, so you, you know what's happening there, right? So the first turn was caned. So we are looking at ways to play um, on your second turn for the best way to play. 
So you play the M on the double letter and play parallel because the M is on the double letter. It'll be doubled twice, both for map and for me. All right, the P will also be doubled, but the M is the, the one that gives you the most points there. Okay, so you know that. Okay, um, and then yes. Um, so um, this section as well, when you have when you have J, Q, X, Z. When you have J, Q, X, Z on your right, you are presented with one of the best ways to maximize your score. Hex, X, me scores 42 points. You don't necessarily have need to rely on vowels being placed next to the DLS for you to double up on DLS. High scoring consonants make Two letter words that do not contain any vowels such as my, hm, and chi. Hm, hm, and hi scores 24 points. Yeah, okay, so um, so you, you have to be careful. Uh, don't think, okay, my bit prime, oh, I can't do that thing with the consonant on the double letter square, but sometimes you can, okay, um, like with M, especially with Y. Even with the H, you can do H M O um, C H. So watch out for those as well. Okay, all right, good. Uh, y is the one that will help you the most because there is F Y, there is K Y, there is M Y, N Y. Yeah. So yeah, good. Okay, so I think we're done with the notes. Um, yeah, we have a few more minutes, so um, I have an interesting section here. Um, Let's do two of those, and then um, let's. Uh, I'll give you the rest for homework. Um, so, like I said to you, this is a serious class. So, there's homework at school, but there's going to be homework for your scrabble class as well, Anishwa. Okay. So, all right. Um, then through to me through through the WhatsApp through your mom's phone or um, or through an email. If you have an email, I can send you my email. I can. Um, yeah, I can I can look at your answers. Um, so usually, like I don't want you to draw them or something. I don't want if you if you want to, you can print them out if it makes it clearer. But um, there is a way I expect the answers to uh, be told. Uh, you just have to tell me what position on the board it is, where you're starting from, and the word and the points. So that way, I'll understand where you're playing it. So you don't need to draw stuff or you don't need to print stuff. Just tell me. Um, oh, it's like F8 and for 20 points, or see, um, like this F8, F8 is this style here. So you're starting there, F8 for 20 points, or yeah, the word and the points and the location. And then I'll know where you're, where you're playing. So um, you don't need to be um, drawing stuff or telling me what the answer should be. I, I just opened up another program, but it's taking a while. But I'll, okay, first we'll look at the rack and then we'll um, see how we can play that on the board. So um, there are 10 racks here. Um, so all I want to know is if these were the letters uh, you were given on your first turn. Um, why is that thing not opening? It's my other program. I go, um, it's taking a while today. Oh no, it is open, it's just opened, okay. So there are 10 racks here. Um, so as you can see the first one, K D T I E N B. So um, yeah, just tell me what the best move here would be. Uh, B I K E D. Uh, yes. Okay. So I have the board now. Um, so let me type that in. Um, so just a moment. Human, human. Yeah. So this is the uh, rack. Um, so you want to play bite, okay? So how would you position the tiles? The B on the double letter. Or teacher can play kited. That's right. The kited is also there, isn't it? Okay. So let's see how much this go. So you want to play B on the double letter. So bite. Let's see how many how many points that is. That is thirty points. Uh, but kited, how would you want to play kited? The K on the double letter. The K on the double letter. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the K on the double letter. Yeah, that's correct. So let's see how many how many points that is. So that's also 30. So 
uh, yeah, at your level, you don't need to worry too much about these two letters. Uh, I think Byte and Kite, they're, they're both equally good. Advanced players, they know a bit more. They might agree with one answer, but I don't want to get into that because uh, it's too, too advanced for you at the moment. I would say Byte or Kite, they're equally good. Very good. Okay. So let's look at uh, the next rack we have on our um, sheet. Um, number two. Yeah. So M E O U P E O. Oh my God. That's just, um, yeah, that's too many vowels there. But let's see. I'm trying to bring them down. Um, let's so I can bring up the board. And the picture is move forward. M O P E. Um, yep. M O U P is good. Yep. But uh, where will you play your M? On the double letter? Unfortunately, it won't fit because uh, why won't it fit? Oh, is, because, is it because it's a four letter, it's a four letter word? It's a four letter word, that's it. It's got to be a five letter word for it to fit. Mm. Okay, so there are various things we looked at on the on the note. So I also said on the first turn, uh, I talked about exchange. Why would you exchange? Because there's you need to um, put uh, have a rack balance. The rack balance is bad there. Why is it bad? Because it has multiple vowels. Yeah, there are too many vowels. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna have to exchange that. So tell me which ones. Uh, you would want to exchange. O U E. O U E. I I think that's a reasonable exchange. Yeah, I think I think that's a reasonable exchange. You will hang on to mo. Yeah, I think exchange O U E. I think that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, exchange O U E is good. Again, at your level, um, I think that's a good answer. Expert players watching this, I'm sure you have other brilliant ideas, but. I think at his level, I think that's a good suggestion by him. Um, I did also give you a small clue on this, the way I type the letters. Um, there are these words in Scrabble, which have lots of vowels in them. Okay, so would you know a four letter word, uh, a four letter word uh, with um, three vowels? Would you know a word like that, Anishpa? Uh I know a four letter word with all vowels. Oh, you know that one. Okay, what is that one? E U O I? Yeah, E U O I. Yeah, that's that's a nice word. That's all vowels. That's right. Um, but there are quite a few four letter words with three vowels. I think I think about 60, 70 words, maybe a bit more. Um, so yeah, you have actually one of those here. So I tried to give you a clue. So M E O U is in fact a word. Okay. Mew? Yeah, it's like sound the cat makes. So uh, you can even make it a verb. You can make it meow and uh, meowing. I think these are valid words as well. So yeah, you could have played meow. If you knew meow, you could have played that because you're scoring something on the first turn. Um, but uh, which is the best way to play meow if you are going to play meow? Uh, you're going to start which where, where are you going to place your turn tell me like the column. on the on the star on the start on the star okay um okay so you can play it like that is there any way you can avoid a vowel next to the double letter square can we can we avoid that uh maybe uh uh, uh a square in front of the star. Okay, let's let's try that. Okay, uh, that was a trick question. You actually can't avoid placing a vowel next to um, the triple, double letter square. This one you can't. Any way you try, you can't. You will end up exposing one at least. But there is one way which is the worst to play the word meow. What is the worst possible way to play meow? Um, in front of the DLS on the left. 
like like this. No, one more square in front. Like this. Oh, no, 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 the listener's one. Why is it the worst one? Not like this, sorry. Like this, why is it the worst? Because it's more easier, if you get a Z, you can put Z, E, Z, O, and then O, O, so, and so, right? Yeah, that's right. So, you not only have one vowel next to a double letter, you have another vowel also, two vowels, E and the U are next to a double letter square. You see that? Yeah, okay. So yeah, so to give you the answers, you don't need to print anything, you don't need to like draw anything, just say like F8, Mio, the word, and the score for it. Okay, the score will also help tell me the score for the move. That way I understand what you've done. Okay, so there are, um, let's go back to the sheet, there are about um, eight other racks. So answer these two as well, put them in the first two as well, but there are 10 for this section. Um, and also, I've given you like uh, positions on the board uh, for the second turn. So these are words that have been played on the first turn by your opponent. So this one is being played horizontal, vertically, honer and loan. And these two have been played horizontally, yen and Cohen. And these are your second turn racks. You are starting. You're, you're not starting. Your, your opponent has started. You're going second. And you have to figure out what the best... Um, best word is here so uh, just tell me like um, the position may be a bit difficult on this one but uh, um, yeah I'm sure if you give is, me this yeah go on is it the the H on top of the E on the double letter that's it yeah so you're gonna have to find the best one so there are lots of options tell me what the best move would be so these are like for homework so yeah so um, yeah, you've done well today. Um, I'm, uh, because the thing is this, I, I, I want to guide you, but the thing is, it's also important that you do work by yourself. Okay, and then you, um, maybe you can ask your sister as well after you've done your part, and then um, we can look at this next week. Okay, um, all right. So for today, it's okay. Um, you can join me again on Sunday, all right, uh, for the tournament. Uh, you can definitely play all six games like last week. Please make sure you come on time. It will help me if you came on time because I will arrange the draws. It's easier for me at 6.30 if you came. But if you can't come at 6.30, you can come for one or two games or even three games between 6.30 and 9.30. But if you're there for the entire time, it's good too. Okay, I can also help you there while you're playing. Okay, so lots of things happening. But um, okay, I will get into studying words later. I think you just let's start slowly. Let's just uh, I, I'll send you this um, a picture of these to your to your mom's phone, um, or if your mom is happy, uh, like you you sending me an email, that is fine too. However, you want to send me the answers. Um, but I think that's enough for today. Uh, we looked at the first turn um, strategies to do with the first turn and the second turn as well. Um, yeah, so anything, um, anything you want to say, anything, um, what did you feel? Do you want to, um, say something or do you want to ask me something else? Uh, no, no good. Okay. So I think you did well today. Okay. Um, on Sunday also, it was good. You were asking me lots of questions. So yeah, definitely ask me more questions when you think of something, uh, like, yeah, like you even told me this example of what you did. Uh, against your sister with this rack so that's a good uh, suggestion you made so yeah so that's enough for today um, next week I'm sure the other two girls will join as well they're, they're nice girls from Penang I'm uh, sorry from Borneo Malaysia as well Malaysia, and one girl the youngest one is 11 and the other one's like 13 or 14 but they're very nice um, they join me on two different screens um, so yeah, so um, let's arrange a time. Hopefully the time is going to be working for them as well. I'll speak with your mom and see what she's going to say. Um, and I'll speak to the other girls as well and their dad. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Uh, you sh um, um, Anispa, um, okay, I'm happy to hear that. So keep practicing and keep studying words and yeah, you will improve. There's lots of time for you, only 11. So, yeah, so that's it for today's uh, class, Anishwa. Okay, all the best. Okay, bye-bye, coach. Bye-bye.